Hello everybody, this is Coach Wesley again bringing you another video about swimming. This time we're going to break down backstroke. We're going to go over uh, the webinar of Fit and Faster and we are going to uh, break down what, what happened at that webinar and I'm going to give you a couple of tips also for improving your backstroke. So this webinar was run by Tyler Clary, Director of Sales and Marketing of Fit and Faster, and Christopher Reed. Christopher is a South African swimmer that studied in the University of Alabama, a two-time NCAA champion, All-American, swam in the Olympic Games in Rio, and got the 10th place in the 100 backstroke, uh, got 13th place in the rel Metri Relay, now he's training at NC State with the Wolfpack lead uh, down in Riley, North Carolina. He already qualified for Tokyo. Uh, as you know, Olympic Games have moved to 2021 because of the coronavirus. And he's already uh, qualified for that meet next year. He's training in order to improve his swimming. So uh, going over the webinar, key... The key for backstroke is to being comfortable in your back, being comfortable in the water, trust in the water. As the great coach, uh, as the great coach Sergio Lopez says, being one with the water is going to help you achieve better swimming. So for those of you that are looking for ways to improve in any stroke, being relaxed, comfortable and being feeling one with the water is going to make you be a better swimmer remember you're trying to move your body through the water and sometimes we forget about how important it is to uh, feel and being one with the water sometimes when we get tired our muscles get tight and we forget about that feeling that you should have in the water all the time it's kind of a kind of an art of moving through the water. You want to keep that nice, long and effective stroke, very efficient stroke all the way in order to have a better swimming. So uh, backstroke is no exception to that. So uh, one of the uh, things that is very important to have in all strokes, including in backstroke, is body position. You want to have long spine in the water. You want to have uh, round the shoulders forward you want to have flat line on the surface of the water and you want to have a head position back so all of those four things are going to make you have an awesome body position again long spine in the water you have to think about being long and tall in the water number two you want to have uh, round the shoulders forward not up forward a little bit forward so you can rotate better you want to have a flat line on the surface of the water, being very high in the water. You say, this is you, being very high, this is the surface of the water. If you're low in the water, you're going to be slow. You want to have a good line on the surface of the water. And then a head position back. So head position back doesn't mean you're going to swim back to like this. Or having head position up. You want to have a line, your head, neck, and spine in a good line so your body is better including your legs remember whatever your head does your legs and hips are gonna do the opposite so you put your head back you're gonna have your back rounded and your legs are gonna be um, out of position you have your head up your hips and, and feet are gonna sink but you have a good line a line here that's gonna make you have a good body line so there's a uh, things different things that you should be looking when you're doing uh, yards or meters for yards you should be looking uh, to find a spot on the ceiling that way you know where you are in, in the lane line uh, you want to avoid moving uh, remember you're not seeing where you're going in back show you have to rely on some spot on the ceiling in order to go in a straight line on the lane if you're doing outdoors, the best way, the best advice is try to look to the lane line to see how close you're from the, that lane line. But you cannot move your head to do that. You have to look, uh, you have to take a peek uh, from, from the side without moving your head, just, just moving your eyes and looking for that lane line next to you. That way you avoid 
going uh, zigzagging, especially in races, uh, whenever the swimmers train in yards and in an indoor pool, and they go to outdoors to do a long course, they kind of lost on how to uh, find a spot and to swim in a, in a straight line. And I seen that every summer, whenever we go uh, and compete, some of our swimmers forget about they don't have a ceiling in outdoors and there's a lot of sun. So also picking your goggles, knowing that whenever you swim indoors, it's good to use clear goggles. Whenever uh, you're doing summer in long course, it's better to use, use dark goggles. Not only if they're clear or dark, but some goggles have good peripheral vision, so you can see better on the sides. Uh, in my case, and Tyler Clary's case, we used to have what they call Swedish goggles. It's basically a, a piece of black plastic. There's no rubber behind they're a little bit uncomfortable but once you get used to that they're awesome goggles because they're lightweight they're cheap uh, they don't only cost like five dollars and they, they don't break so my advice uh, try to get comfortable being uncomfortable wearing a swedish goggles you can buy more than two if you want any color and yeah uh choosing uh Dark goggles with good peripheral vision for outdoors is the best way to go for summer. Also, we have to go over what is the kick and the lower back. Lower back and kick, what, what role plays in back row? So for that, turn your hips upwards. Do this by sucking your belly bottom with your spine with your core want to tension your core and thoracic region. This is crucial, this is very important. If you have swim backstroke and never have think about this, start doing this to increase your body position, having a better lower back and kick. Again, turn your hips upwards. Do this by sucking your belly button to your spine with your core and then we want to tension your core and thoracic region. Again, try to do this. Your kick will improve, your body position will improve, and you will have an awesome back row. For the kick, small but fast kick. This is what uh, Christopher Reed works on. He's a six feet six tall swimmer, and he could easily um, do a bigger kick, but he option, he have tried different things, he has option for go for a small and fast kick. Um, he thinks about the kick like a, a boat motor engine. So all that propulsion coming from the left with a small and fast kick, that's the way to think about, that's the way to increase speed. Um, increase the kick rate to increase the arm tempo. How many of you guys have gone to a backstroke race and has start kicking very fast and then uh, 25 meters to go, you're super tired, your arms start to go slower and you don't know what to do and then the legs start to hurt. So what you want to do, my advice would be build your kick. You need that kick, you need that fast, strong kick to keep your arms going when you're tired. And that will be at the end of the race. So if you use too much of a kick at the beginning, chances are your legs are gonna get tired by the end. You wanna do the opposite. At the beginning of the race, you're rested, you feel strong, you feel fast. You can swim fast without using that much, much leg. If you start to build in that kicking, you will have a strong and fast kick in the end and your overall race will be better. So increase the kick rate to increase the arm tempo. That is very important, remember, Arms and legs are connected to the core. If your core is good, if your core is strong, you can pull this. Um, so if you have heavy legs, you have to engage even more of your core. You should have the same feeling of you're doing a crunch, an ab exercise. Some people ha have a very hard time lifting the feet up and having a good, uh, body uh, position, including with the legs. Some swimmers just can't find themselves kicking high enough. So you gotta engage even more your core, 
you should feel like your apps are working the same way you're doing a crunch. That's one good advice for those of you that have a hard time lifting your feet. A good exercise outside of the water is uh, doing a leg lift, it's an app workout. What you uh, want to do is uh, tie your pelvis and then try to slide your hand in your lower back and try to uh, find if there is any space between your lower back and the ground. If you find there is a space between your hand and uh, between the, the, between the lower back and your, the ground, that means that you have an arch back. If you have an arch back, chances are your legs are gonna be lower in the water. So you wanna uh, tighten your pelvis, uh, reduce the space, if any space between your lower back and ground, that way your hand will not fit in. And that means that you have an awesome body position to have your legs up in backstroke. Big kick feels strong, but you're not going anywhere. You gotta do a small and fast kick because it works better. If you uh, want to make your arms go faster, you gotta kick faster. I already told you this, this is very important that I repeat it again. If you wanna go faster in back row, you, you wanna have fast arm, which we, we, you actually should have. Uh, kicking faster is the way to achieve that. And always thinking about uh, kicking inside of a bucket. Kicking inside of a bucket is uh, something I got from Gary Hall Sr. from the race club. He's always, uh, uh, in, um, in his videos, he's always uh, asking swimmers to kick inside of a bucket. That's a good way to think about it. Drills. For drills, Christopher Reed's favorite drills are body position kick. It's basically putting your arms on the side, having an awesome body position, and he's gonna kick Let's say six kick on one side and then rotate for the other side. Six kick, change, six kick. Having an awesome body position. This can be performed with fins or without, depending on your uh, swimming abilities. Another drill that he likes to do is two two drill. What basically is swimming back to one arm only, working on rotation with the opposite arm on the side, one, and then a second stroke with even deeper pull for more rotation. And then same thing on the other arm. One, and then second one even deeper. Um, that reminds me that Tyler Kerr was saying in the webinar that when he used to swim, the way he knew he was doing good enough rotation was uh, putting his shoulder on his chin and has, has, he has a very thick uh, chin hair, uh, his shoulder was getting scratched here. And those scratch, scratches was telling him that he was doing a good enough of a rotation. Um, another drill is swimming with a, could be a water bottle, we have, be a Gatorade uh, bottle, it could be a, a coffee cup in your forehead. You put your coffee cup in your forehead and you swim backstroke without uh, avoiding that uh, cup to fill in the water. That keeps you your head straight and a good body position. Remember, whatever the head does, the body is gonna follow. So you wanna keep that head uh, without moving when you're doing backstroke. If you put a, a water bottle, a coffee cup here, and then you will have uh, that head uh, ready for a good backstroke. Then he likes a very interesting drill that is called over kick backstroke with slow arms and then build the arms. So basically he does a 50 with a very fast kick at the beginning and slow arms. And then as the 50 goes, he start to build in the speed of the arms. Last five meters of the 50 is full speed arms and legs. And then that shows him some control, having that relationship between kicking and arm speed and backstroke, which is very important. Remember, in order to move your arms faster, you gotta kick faster. The best swimmers in the world, they don't do different drills. They just do it better than anybody else. Master the basics and be better than other at the basics is what sets apart the good from the greatest. Master the basics and be better than others at the basics. Basics in swimming could be diving off the blocks, 
diving up the block is something that is being teach since you're uh, the beginner swimmer. If you want to compete, you should know how to dive from the blocks. But not everybody dives the same. If you look at 50 freestyle on the Olympic Games, you will see that they dive is pretty awesome. But they do they are not doing some magic stuff. They're just doing the same stuff that you should be doing, but better. Their uh, jump is stronger, their entry is cleaner, their dolphin kicks are faster, their streamline is better. So that leads to faster speed, just by doing that basic stuff better. Another example could be in the 50 freestyle, reducing the amount of breath that you take. Let's say right now you're doing a 50 freestyle and you're taking five breaths, and reducing that amount all the way to one or zero is what you should be looking for as you want to improve. Again, if you go to uh, YouTube Olympic Games 50 freestyle, you will see that those swimmers take one or zero breath in long course. So that's a great advice, getting better at those uh, basic stuff in swimming. Breathing in backstroke, having control of the breathing, having a rhythm and finding whatever works better for you is crucial to have a good backstroke. Let me explain this. So in my case, when I was swimming backstroke, I was breathing only on the left arm. I'm explaining this. So left arm, no breath. That doesn't mean it's the way to go. That works better for me. Some swimmers, they don't think about it. They just breathe in every single stroke and they're fine with that. But the best way to do it is if you try different things to know whatever works better for you. Um, Christopher breathes every four strokes. Yes, every four strokes. So he takes one breath and then the next three he doesn't breathe. And then breathe again. So that tells you if a world-class backstroke like him is doing that kind of stuff, means that you should look for your own way too. So having control of what kind of a breathing pattern works better for you is something that you should add to your backstroke. Always remember, whenever you're swimming in all strokes and backstroke is no exception, you should pull the water with your entire arm. You're not pulling water with your hand. You're not pulling water with only your hand and forearm. You wanna pull the water with your entire arm down. That way you have a better grab of the water, better pull, stronger, more efficient, and you will uh, um, increase your abilities to swim faster. A good drill to make sure you're pulling water with your entire arm is double arm backstroke pull. I think everybody has done this drill before, but some of the swimmers don't understand the importance of this. Sometimes they just use it to rest and take more breath because their head are outside of the water instead of actually thinking about having that uh, uh, catch of the water and using the entire arm to pull very strong down the water. That way you get a better understanding how to um, catch the water better and have, be more efficient in the water. Another good drill to have more control over your swimming is swimming two strokes uh, with a constant speed and then two stroke with accelerating down and then two stroke with a constant, constant speed and then two stroke accelerating down. That acceleration down is gonna increase the speed and it's gonna make you swim faster. But knowing the difference between the two is gonna make you more aware of it and you will have uh, to take advantage of that. Okay, let's go over to uh, favorite sets. Um, when Tyler was, Tyler is a 400 AM specialist and he did uh, a lot of backstroke for that. One of his sets was uh, 10 300 backstroke, uh, fast. That's a 3000 meter backstroke working on more on the endurance side of the backstroke. For Christopher, he was doing more of a sprinting set, but it's a very long set. It's 50 50s on a 30 second interval in yards. That is very fast. That is like 33 seconds in long course. For those of you that swim in long course, 50 50s in every 30 seconds. He was saying in order to make the interval, 
he got to use the underwater dolphin kicks. And he had to go for 10 meters on the water. Otherwise, he would miss the interval. It's very tough set. I can add to this, not my favorite sets, but um, I saw, I said before that I saw a Cuba national team training at my pool when I was uh, 15 at the time, 1995. Uh, Rodolfo Falcom of Cuba, he got silver medal in Atlanta 1996 Olympic Games 100 back. So he went a 54-98 back in 1996. And I saw him training and doing 10 100 backstroke long course in every 102. Uh, sorry, uh, doing 102 in every three minutes. So every time he swam the 100 back, he was he had to go for 102 or less, uh, 10 times. It's a thousand meters uh, swimming at 102 pace. That was back in 1996, 95, 96, and. Um, race pacing was not that big of a deal back then so for me it was kind of impressive and that tells you what kind of uh, training sets uh, best swimmers in the world do okay um, I trained one year uh, for backstroke I want to improve my IM and I decided to go uh, all in and backstroke for an entire year and I went from a 117 and 100 back to a 105 that's a 12 second improvement when I was 16 and the way I did that was by watching the best backstrokers in my pool going in the water watch them how did they enter the, the water how they pull how they finish how much they rotate how much they kick what's their head position everything I was studying analyzing them copy them and then training and I did a lot of distance backstroke I did a lot of 300s 400s 800 backstroke and then when I was comfortable doing backstroke and feeling strong I did a lot of fast repetitions in backstroke I remember doing a 105 at practice and taper in the uh, a training um, but yeah uh, that's that's my experience improving in backstroke for entire year okay let's say you're looking to improve your backstroke and you know that you are the kind of swimmer that like to bounce in the water whenever you are swimming backstroke that means one thing that means that at some point your hand is going too deep is is pulling the water down so um if you want to go that way all the pull and kick should be working your way going this way so if you start bouncing that means that your pull at some point is going too deep that's making you go up that makes sense right so um, could be at the entry, could be that you're going too deep with your hand at the entry and then you're going up. That change of deepness and then shallowness on the pull is making your body go up and down. Or could be at the end, could be at the end that you're going too deep, uh, sending the water down to your feet that making you lift. Okay, so one good uh, drill which is not something that you should uh, be doing all the time, but if you want to avoid bouncing, you can try uh, swimming back or pulling from the lane line because the lane line is in a straight line. And if you start pulling from the lane line, you're going to pull in a straight line and your entire body should be avoiding that bouncing. You got to make sure whenever you're not pulling from that lane line, you feel that you're still pulling from the lane line so you have that muscle memory and avoid uh, bouncing back again how to overcome the fear from the wall so some of you uh, probably have have the experience of hitting the wall or swimming in backstroke because you didn't saw the flags or you or you miscount your stroke um, you gotta realize that the wall is not moving the wall is there the flags are there it's the same distance what is actually moving is you so you have to consider Whenever you, you're doing your stroke count, how fast you're swimming into the wall, you have to consider how many strokes is taking you. Sometimes you uh, want to sprint and back, so you take more strokes than, than, than uh, regular. And, and you have to be confident about knowing uh, how many strokes you got to take in order to not hit the wall. Or in the opposite side, if you get turn around and to you your backstroke turn too far from the wall 
chances are you're gonna get disqualified by that. So you gotta have that perfect, perfect stroke count considering the speed and considering the stroke rate of the arms. That's the best way to avoid fear from the wall, gaining that confidence back whenever you're having trouble counting or seeing by the matter the flags. So this is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoy all the information. Uh, take notes, study this information so you can use it in your advantage whenever we go back into the training. I would like you guys to subscribe to this channel. Please comment down below which kind of video you want to see next. I will consider that uh, to making more videos for you guys. So for now, uh, stay safe and see you soon. Bye.